Hello and welcome into another edition of Sitting Down with Scar. I'm the football voice of the Hoyas, Jeremy Huber, joined by Georgetown head coach Rob Scarlotta. Rob, start off at the top. Congratulations. Another win, 2-0, 27 in a rain-shortened win over Sacred Heart. Congratulations on the win. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was uh, been doing this a long time, probably the, only, the second time that we had a delay. Um, game took about five hours. Players and you know, really uh, give a lot of credit to our support staff, from our training staff to our uh, director of ops and all the people that kept us, you know, going as we were in the rain delay and the lightning delay, uh, waiting to get back on Cooper Field to complete the game. Yeah, and were there any, did you kind of go into the weekend thinking maybe this could be a thing and were there any extra plans you might have put in place to be ready for that situation? Yeah, you know, we've we've had a couple of our teams at Georgetown go through some of these delays and talk with some of their coaches about being prepared for it. So back in the spring last year, we had a rain delay or a lightning delay on a, a beautiful uh, day in April. And uh, we also uh, completed one on Tuesday of this week. It was a little bit of the heat related. We had to go in and change what gear we had on based on the heat. And we used it as a lightning delay just so the players be used to an interruption, you know, have the uh, have the ability to go in change, you know, sit there for about 10 minutes and reset and have to complete a practice. So, you know, anytime that you can say we've done this in coaching, uh, it carries its weight in gold for us. So really impressed with how our players went into the locker room. You know, we're really blessed at Cooper Field. We went into our locker room. We threw the games on. Uh, we had, you know, food and snacks for our guys to keep them going and uh, had the space and, and the area to meet with our guys uh, to go over a couple of things, but also just let them be themselves and relax and told them we would let them know when we go back out. And our, uh, you know, our council and our senior leaders did a great job of getting everybody set and mentally focused back in when we had to take the field. And Rob, it was a weird situation because for that delay, only part of it really featured rain. And during the game, you got some, but always good when you have bad conditions, you can lean on the running game. Yeah. Another big day on the ground, another threatening of 300 yards on the ground. Why has that run game been so effective this year? Now, both backs are running extremely well, but everything starts up front. You know, we've, uh, you know, some great leadership from fifth year to Lottie Palomalu. Kaysen uh, is one of our captains. And, you know, Lassini Maka is playing probably, in my opinion, the, one of the best players we have in the entire team playing center for us. So, you know, Trevor Swan has been impactful at tackle, Luke Patma, and we have some young players that are pushing for time right now. So anytime that you can put two backs over 100 yards, in a game uh, that was shortened, you know, it was about seven minutes short of a, of, of a full game is really impressive. You know, and one of the things I think that the offense is starting to have is some confidence to get those tough yards. You know, those are some of the tougher runs that I've seen us have in the last five years from both uh, Naeem and Josh. Why do you think Josh and Naeem complement each other so well? You know, they have different styles. Uh, Naeem is really quick in the hole when he's going to be tough to tackle. He had a, you know, a great run on a third down for us. You know, and Josh is seeing the field extremely well right now. So, you know, the nice thing right now is we don't have to block all of them. Uh, we'd like to all the time. I'm sure Coach Parton and Coach Klein would like us to cover everybody up for in Coach Spence's scheme. But our, our, our backs have become a little bit of an X factor and made one guy miss or run through someone. So it's been fun to watch him play with a physical style. Uh, and, you know, hopefully they just keep getting stronger as the season goes on. Rob, talking to Josh Stakely this week, talking a little bit to Talati last week, they've all kind of mentioned that at this point the offense is in sync and they feel like other guys doing their jobs well are helping them do their job well. Maybe some of TK's running ability is helping the backs get open or making it easier on the offensive line. The receivers doing their job, kind of making it better. TK's throwing ability downfield is opening some things up. Do you feel like right now that being in sync and guys doing their jobs is making this a more dangerous offense? I hope so. You know, TK's doing a really good job of leading the offense. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got a fifth year's poise to him and demeanor. I uh, really hasn't had many issues overall within the scheme. And I think Coach Spence is doing a really good job with our offensive staff at looking at what we do well and being able to put our guys in place to have success. So when you can put some drives together and get the ball to some playmakers like Nick Dunham and um, like the two backs. And, you know, I really like our tight end room. We have a lot of young guys that are playing that are complimenting the receivers with Brock Beastick. Um, doing a great job leading the outside kids. So some very solid players that, um, 
you know, I call lunch pail guys that can really do a great job blocking on the edge. You know, Cam Pigott uh, is one of those guys. He's one of those glue guys to go along with 35 Tyree. So, you know, we have some deep threats, Brock Beastick and Jimmy Kibble and Keenan. So, you know, that's a really young group. I'm saying some names that you really haven't heard or seen from before. So I think as the more they get reps and the more they get in the scheme and practice weeks, hopefully we'll be able to get better and better and keep adding to the scheme from week to week. We saw the two big touchdowns from B-Stick and Kibble or the two big plays from those two uh, in last week's game. But you mentioned lunch pail guys, and I feel like the defensive line has been doing a good job, and maybe there's no more of a lunch pail guy you have mm-hmm. than John Caramonico had two tackles for loss, a sack last week. And I remember during fall camp, we were talking, I think it was a day, there's a little skirmish, he was in the middle of it, you said, look, you know what? Didn't like it today, but I tell you what, if I had the drive and everything that kid brings to the table, this would be such a good program. Again, talk about what John's kind of bringing to that defensive line and to the defense as a whole. Yeah, it's an attitude. You know, it's it's an overall mindset. And having John in there to compliment Veron has been great for us. You know, if you look across the board, you know, those two inside, um, Ivory Harrell is healthy outside now with Mateen Iberoba. So, you know, they've done a good job of setting the uh, setting us up up front. And it's really helped us on the outside because of who we have at corner and some of the defensive backs. So the combination of those two things have gotten us back to the number one thing for our defense, which is to be able to consistently stop the run. You know, we were tested in the first two games and, you know, we'll be tested even more this weekend with um, Stonehill coming in and Jermaine Corbett. And, you know, it's a huge challenge for us up front to be able to stop the run and get them in some third down situations. You know, John is leading a group that, again, has some proven players and some guys that are, that are starting to make a name for themselves. So it's great to see that group grow under the leadership from Coach Snyder. You know, Kevin Snyder's done come in this year and done a really good job um, just really creating the culture in that room and having those guys understand that just do your job and make it easy for the linebackers to play fast behind you. Rob, you mentioned Stonehill. That's the opponent this week. Again, they've had the good win last week against Central Connecticut State. Played maybe better than the score indicated against New Hampshire. What have been your impressions of seeing the Skyhawks on film? Tough football team. You know, they uh, talk about a lunch pal team. You know, they're they're very well coached on the special teams. Um, you know, they, they turned around a 20-point loss, I think, last year to Central into a victory. You know, did a great job of Dealing with some adversity at the end of the game, they were up. Uh, Central Connecticut caught them, and then they came back down and drove it down so they could hit a 53-yard field goal to to win it. So, you know, they're they're well coached. They have some really great schemes in the run game, and you know, Jermaine Corbett's one of the better backs at our level. Uh, he played for Danny George at Long Branch uh, High School in Jersey, and uh, you know, is is an impact player. So, definitely uh, a game where we'll be challenged uh, up front on both sides, and looking forward to the challenge. You know, as we get from week to week here, I just like watching where we are from a progression standpoint. And we're going to play a lot of good football teams, you know, as we're coming up. We have Stonehill this week. We play Fordham for homecoming. Um, We have Columbia the week after that. We have Penn. So, you know, in that order, everybody that we play, really it it matters on how much we can improve from week to week, how healthy we can stay, and if we can keep achieving the 1% each day in practice. Well, Rob, we're ready for that uh, matchup on Saturday, but now time for our sitting down with Scar Spotlight. And we bring on a student assistant, Graham Hill, former Hoya football player and involved with Team Impact. Graham, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. Graham, let's start off here. For those that don't know, what is Team Impact? Yeah, so Team Impact is a national nonprofit organization that matches children with chronic or life-threatening illnesses or diseases with uh, college athletic teams like us. Um, they've matched around 2,600 kids with around at uh, to around 800 campuses across the country in all 50 states. So they're definitely growing. Um, but the goal is basically just to give these matches, um, their parents and their siblings, a sense of community and support. Um, and also kind of just serve as a little bit of a distraction from their medical realities. I mean, these kids grow up and they do not have a normal childhood like we were blessed enough to have. Um, and so putting them on college athletic teams, letting them come to games and practices. And uh, Caleb came to bowling the other day. Um, that's just kind of something fun they get to do um, and outside of the norm for them. And Graham, how long have the Hoyas been participating in this program? 
Um, we've been in this program for around five years. Jack Tishman, who was one of my best friends, um, was the first Georgetown fellow, and he started when he was a freshman. Um, and he did a really good job growing it. And again, it's been such a good program, and it's one that's kind of spread throughout the hilltop. Um, Rob, I believe you were you guys the first ones to kind of get in on this, and has it been gratifying to see so many Hoya teams take part in it as well? Yeah, it's it's in the ethos of the school, men and women for others. And you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Coach Doherty. Kevin Doherty runs all of our initiatives for this. Um, has been at the forefront for us with Team Impact, and prior to that with um, friends at Jacqueline. So these efforts are really um, what it's all about. For our players to have the ability to give back and to see that it, what they're doing impacts a lot of people. So having Caleb and his family around our guys is a huge lift. They were there through the whole lightning delay on Saturday and just great to see Caleb um, and his family be able to experience, you know, what it is to be on a team, what it is to, you know, go bowling with a team and have some fun doing that and go through singing the fight song at the end of a victory. So for us, he's, uh, he's our, you know, like I said, when we signed him, he's our biggest signee of the year. And uh, we're looking forward to having him around throughout the season and having his family involved with our program. Talking about Caleb Peterson, the Team Impact signee. Graham, kind of your impressions on going through this with the signing ceremony and all the things that Caleb has been able to do with the team. What does that kind of make you feel? I mean, it's been so awesome. I mean, first of all, Coach Scar has been incredibly gracious. Um, and Coach Doherty, just working with them has been awesome. But just to see the way the team has kind of rallied around everyone, um, the way that Caleb just kind of lights up our whole team. I mean, I've told him a couple, I've told him this a couple times, like he's our good luck charm. I mean, he's the most, he's the winningest player in college football right now as we're a two and oh. So um, hopefully he can keep coming to games, but I just think like, like we're trying to give him a sense of distraction from his realities. I mean, we are truly inspired by everything that he um, is and everything he's done in his um, short life of 10 years. So, um, it's just been such an inspiration for all of us. I know. And, um, signing day made me feel really good just cause you know, you see the parents and their reactions and you can kind of just see everything that they've worked for. Um, and him being honored was just a very cool experience. I'm, I'm really glad that we all got to be a part of it. And Rob, you're a guy who's worked with young men for so long. And I, I'm sure there's some times where there's not the perspective to, Things like Team Impact give these guys some perspective to say, you know, my situation and kind of look at what Caleb's going through. Is that a thing that your team gets from this as well? Yeah, I think anytime that you can step outside of your own reality and, and your own little box, everybody has it. You know, what are you worried about today and what are you going to do? And, you know, um, today being Thursday, you know, in our week, you know, we stole it from Pete Carroll with some of his days, you know, make a plan Monday. Today's thankful Thursday. You know, we ask the kids before meetings start to say, hey, listen, send one text. Make sure you thank one person for where you are and what you're doing. And, you know, no matter how tough of a day you're having, that's going to uplift you. And we're lucky to be on a campus where that's part of the ethos. And their kids have bought into that. Um, and it, it, it's just a big part to be able to give back and to understand the platform that you have to impact somebody's life um, through organizations like Team Impact. To me, the, that those opportunities are incredible. And hopefully it starts you know, a foundation and a basis for our players. So they will continue this, not just at the hilltop, but when they leave here, you know, the four for 40 we talk about isn't just about school and doing well in that or the career of football, but you know, what you're going to do in service to others once you leave um, Georgetown. And uh, that's a huge deal for us. I think it, it's made our program stronger. It's made our team closer. Um, and it's something that will always be a part of our program. Graham, if folks want to get involved with team impact, how do they do it? Yeah, they can just go to uh, Team Impact's website, and whether they want to sign up as a team or sign up to be a match, they can just um, – there are QR codes um, on basically the forefront of the website. So I would encourage everyone to get involved. It's super awesome and um, incredibly impactful on both ends. Well, Graham, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And that's going to wrap it up for another edition of Sitting Down with Scar. Remember, Georgetown hosts Stonehill this weekend – 12.30 Eastern kickoff, seat in person at Cooper Field or watch it online at ESPN+. Thanks to Coach Scarlotta, our guest Graham Hill of Team Impact in Georgetown University and producer Eliza Kravitz. That's all for this edition of Sitting Down with Scar. I'm Jeremy Huber, Hoya Saxon.